Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to the Wolf Den podcast. The only podcast. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) And the only podcast with two white guys talking about (laughs) video games. Yes. Such a rare breed, this show right here. Yes, it's very unique, our, our, yeah. our, our, what we have going on. Yeah. Speaking of being unique, though, last <laughs> week we talked about, uh, we talked about, uh, iTunes and how, yes, yes, we, we did. We did. And how you should listen to us on iTunes. Yes. Uh, as far as I saw last week, we went up to, uh, I think number 70 or something. On iTunes for gaming? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I'd like to... It's hard to tell on this stupid website. Yeah. It's, it's hard to tell on the website you're using. It's also hard to tell on iTunes itself sometimes. Yes. So, so annoying. Because like, I don't think gaming is technically a category mm-hmm. in iTunes. Like, usually, like, well, before, at least, when I did it directly through them, I had to set... I had to set the genre to leisure right because that's what gaming fell under at the time apple podcast oh here we go all right here we go last week i think we peaked what was it was march 3rd when was march 3rd that was the day after the podcast baby week. we yeah. peaked at 71 <laughs> Woo! thanks guys for going over to Thank itunes you. and letting it ride yeah, few few more spots. Maybe I can afford that Mac Studio that they revealed today, or maybe <laughs> they they'll did. just give me one. <laughs> they did do that. That's two thousand dollars for like the base one. I know. I, I was looking at it. I'm like, I could get away with that, but then I'm like, oh, I could get a MacBook. Yeah, I don't know what I want. like it doesn't seem <laughs> worth it. Especially how I use my MacBook. I pointed and it's not there. The way I use my yeah. MacBook is I just have it plugged into the monitor and it works fine. I know. I'm thinking like maybe a, something like that would be good for me because I've been doing a lot more of my computer work here at my desk, so I'm not mm-hmm. moving. But then I then I'd have to get the monitor and the and the keyboard and whatnot. And if I have to go to the toilet, I can't bring my computer. So I mean, it is a lot more powerful than you would get at for a uh, yeah. MacBook at a similar price. Yeah, we need to the talk starting... about why we're here first. Yes, before we do yes. anything so else, I won't so talk about. Back. I won't talk about how the uh, the hard drive starts at. 512 gigs which should be a crime in this day and age but we're going to talk about what this podcast is about video today, games today Mike guys th- talking about video games i thought it'd be fun to talk about uh th- let's just go right into it i'll, I'll thank yeah. the subs and stuff in two <laughs> seconds um oh uh, there's been a this breaking news happened yesterday it was a crazy day yesterday so much happened in the, the, the nintendo community is crazy uh this yeah. youtuber unknown youtuber uh, decided think, to test his Nintendo he, Switch. Doesn't he do modding? <laughs> YouTube modder, uh, programmer. What else do we have? Uh, a Twitcher. Charlatan. I think. I think one person said. <laughs> uh, this guy. This this guy. Uh, ran a test on his Nintendo Switch for thirty six hundred hours, which was a week before the Switch came out. From then on. Uh, uh, the Switch OLED to be the to OLED clarify. Switch, leaving a game on there for thirty six hundred hours to see how long it takes to burn in the screen, and apparently yeah. it that's the cap is around thirty six hundred hours when you start to see something. It's really not that much. It's still playable, but there is some notable ghosting. It's something that would right. be an annoyance if if you were to to experience it yourself. Uh, that YouTuber is me. Mask off. <laughs> it's it was me the whole time, Austin. <laughs> Oh, son of a I bitch. did it! I did the thing! You might know that if you've seen this podcast before, I used to have it uh, over here. But it was blinding me when I was trying to go to sleep, so I moved it to the yeah. studio. And now it looks like that is over here. And it's still there right now. Running Breath of the Wild. Um, but yeah, I found out that it, t- it takes about 3,600 hours for it to uh, start to finally show the burn-in. Uh, and there's all these, <laughs> all these different 
articles popping up. Now, I knew that there was going to be articles because when I did the test at original... Actually, no. It's weird. I did the OLED test. I started it in October, early October. Then, like, two or three months later, I... Uh, I decided it was enough time to make a video about it and because I kept getting questions about it. I made a video about it saying, hey, um, it's not a concern. I know people keep thinking it's a concern. It's really not. Don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to your Switch. Like, who's going to play a game that has UI elements that are that big, that stay on the screen for that long for 1,800 hours? Like, like yeah. those UI elements have to be on the screen static for 1,800 hours. Uh, by that point, that would take a, like years if you're a power user, maybe one year, and but and no, it would take more than that. But anyway, well, thirty six hundred hours to be clear is one hundred and fifty days. So but you need to play that's twenty four hours a day. Of, yeah, that you'd have to play one hundred and fifty days worth of Switch in order for it to experience this. So not only that, <laughs> it has to be one game. With mm -hmm. one image on the screen for that the entirety of that thirty six hundred hours. Yes. So when I hit the eighteen hundred hour mark, I figured that was also like a, like this is never if it didn't happen now, it's never going to happen. Like this is a pretty uh, uh, gratuitous test. Is that a right word? Uh, yeah. It was. It was. I put it through its paces. No one else is going to do that. So I thought eighteen hundred hours was perfect. It took a month for people to write stories about that video after I posted it for some reason and. They wrote it. They wrote about it in like Brazil and Japan first, and then it hit America. I don't know why that happened, but uh, yesterday I posted a video on this, a uh, very short, brief video, uh, six minutes long. You should watch it if you hadn't. Uh, but then all these outlets picked it up and noted that hey, turns out this isn't going to be as big of an issue as uh, as previously thought, which is good because there were a lot. There was a surprising amount of people who were concerned that OLED burn-in yeah. would be an issue. Uh, I don't know if you want to read the article, but before we do that, let me uh, thank all of the people here. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I hit the I hit a button. Uh, we have we have a lot. Thank you very much. We got Marimba Pirate with thirty three months. Thank you very much. We got Angel without wings. Thank you for the seven months. Hey Bob, love the content. Keep up the amazing work. Your skits are always hilarious. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, Ravenclaw Hepcat. Oh, hello. Thank you for the raid. How are you doing? I remember you. I did not know you streamed. Uh, f f thank you for the raid. Fred Fred Bushi. Thank you for the 33 months. Well, well, well. If it isn't the king of controversies. Thanks, dude. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Richie Two Fly. Thank you for the six months. Just came to say hi and renew my monthly subscription. Thank you. I appreciate it. Spankwise with the gift of sub. Thank you. Uh, Sir Smithers. Thank you for the 100 bits. Wolfden Podcast. The only podcast that gives you boss baby vibes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Do you know that? Do you know that joke? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you explained to me the joke, and I just saw on Twitter that there's this thing on Twitter whenever a comic book movie does something from his, that what also appeared in one of the Zack Snyder comic book films, they'll say oh. Zack Snyder's blueprint, <laughs> and that is the boss baby vibes of the comic <laughs> book movie world. I'm sure that was a tweet of the week at at some point. Probably. Um. Luke Antone, thank you for the two months. What is a must-play PS game that's not part of the collection you get with PlayStation Plus or PlayStation 5? Uh, I really want to play Sifu, but I haven't played it yet. <laughs> yeah. I think that's on PS4 also. Oh. Yeah. Well, he just has PlayStation game, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, that's uh, not on PlayStation Plus or PlayStation 5. The, the problem it's is... It's not this... on PlayStation Plus on PlayStation 5. Right, right. Spider Man, Spider Man, both of them. Yeah. Um, Astro Boy, but that's you have yeah. you have that already. Astro Boy is still one of my favorite PlayStation exclusives. Astro uh, Astro Bot, Astro Bot, Astro Boy Astro, is another Astro thing. Boy is a uh, anime. Uh, anyway, Co Coco Baby, thank you for the five months. Five months. Hey, that's when the OLED came out. How long and how long it took to burn? <laughs> yes. You've been yeah. subscribed for that long. Piggy Gamer, thanks for the 15 months. Hey, Bob, what do you think of the new 8-bit do Xbox controller? Keep up the great work. I like it a lot. Um, There's a new one? Wait, is there a new one? Or I, I 
thought you were just talking about the Xbox Ape Duke controller. Oh, there is a new one. Oh shit! Put it in the put it in the list of things to talk about. All right, hold on. Oh, there I'll is a new it, one. I'll put it under. Okay, we will talk about that. Uh, and Spoopy Girl, thanks for the twelve months, one year with the Wolf Boys. Yay! Yay! All right, all right. Now what do the we do? The article. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, uh guess OLED me up. Come on. Are gorgeous. <laughs> OLED screens are glorious, gorgeous, vibrant, but they don't last forever. Eventually, their organically lit pixels can wear, and some have understandably been worried that the OLED. The OLED-equipped Nintendo Switch, released last October, might eventually succumb to burn-in. The good news, according to one test, it might take 3,600 hours of constant play on a static screen to even begin to see the first signs of that dreaded screen, uh, Malady. Malady? What What they said. Malady. YouTuber. It's oh, it's The Verge. Yeah. Malady. There you go. They said Malady. Malady. Okay. <laughs> YouTuber Wolfden reports that after five months of leaving the Sw Nintendo Switch OLED turned on, plugged into a charger, leaving a static shot of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wilds, Link effectively staring into the sun, he's only now finally seeing some ghosting. And it's not a lot, as you'll see for yourself in the video embedded above. Wolfden also tested at 1,800 hours and didn't see much of an effect back then either. Uh, as Verge colleague uh, Chris Welch told, uh, said back at launch, burn-in isn't quite the fear it used to be with OLED screens as the technology has come a long way, both in terms of OLED subpixel longevity and built-in software protections. Sometimes those protections can even be a little too aggressive, as explained in their review of the LG 48-inch uh, C1 OLED TV. But they're there, and even if burn-in still exists, whatever Nintendo is doing seems to be effective. By the way, the Nintendo Switch just turned, turned five this past week. Here's here are a few pieces to commemorate, and it's a like five year anniversary of the Switch. So uh, the first article that I saw come up was uh, Ars Technica. They were mm -hmm. pretty quick with their with their article. Um, and the first thing, first of all, Bob Wolf then Wolf. <laughs> That's what it says on your birth certificate. YouTube tech critic and Twitch host Bob. Wolf. My favorite thing about these is when people try to categorize me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always something weird. Um, but he said began an experiment to conclusively answer the question. No, no, no. He 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 said when I started. I think he said I started it at launch, uh, or on launch day, and I I don't rem. At first, I got mad because I was like, I started it a week before launch day. But now I'm thinking I might have started it on launch day. I, I don't think remember. You, cause it, because you got... A, so it was weird the way you got your OLED, your OLED Switch. You pre-ordered it, and you are going to get it on launch day. But then you got it... I like acquired one early. early. Yes. Let's just say it fell off the truck yes. and cost and when you, MSRP anyway. <laughs> So you picked it up off the back of the truck. Was the one you got off the back of the truck the one you're testing? Yes. Okay. But but uh, but I think that uh, I I was playing with it for like for like a few right. days and then and then I decided to run the test. So I don't know even sometime between a week before it launched and the day it launched is when I started the test. Right. So I honestly don't even really remember. Um. So I'm not even mad that about that. I probably say it in one of my videos. Um. But then there was a, there was a part in this Ars Technica article that that did offend me. Uh, um, he said something like, uh, "Oh, here it is. This test has welcome implications for a lot of tech products, including Nintendo Switch. Uh, UI elements on smartphones are much more likely to have thousands of hour impressions." Uh, all right, I'm having a stroke. He said something like, curiously, Wolf's uh, uh, Wolf's test didn't uh, mention, didn't have a mention of UI elements like like the hearts in Breath of the Wild or the uh, or the D-pad in the top left corner. And I li it's literally both of those things are in the video. I don't yeah. know why he said that. <laughs> oh. Oh, I think he changed it. 
Oh no, here it is. Wolf doesn't fo these. These retained outlines are visible even when zoomed out perspective, though curiously, Wolf doesn't focus on the static UI elements in Breath of the Wild, like heart icons or a D-pad selector for items that tend to inspire the most fears of Burnin. That was just a weird way to, because he must have, he must have mentioned those things because they were in the video. So that was a weird way to word yeah. that. Because I do, t what does it mean that I didn't that focus was like one on of the, I, you You bring that up like in the beginning. Yeah, and I mentioned it in uh, I mentioned it in the original video, and I mentioned it in this video. Yeah, you didn't focus on it, but you did mention it. Yeah, it's just I I think maybe because like when people think of burning, they're gonna think of like the UI elements because those are always gonna be on screen, right? And like you mentioned it, but it was, I guess it was more of a passing mention compared to maybe, the bright lights that he was looking that Link maybe. Was looking at. I Maybe I should have started talking about UI elements because that is the right. biggest concern with OLED burn and stuff. AU Retriever says you focus more on the bright squares than the static elements. I think yeah. that's because in this video, that is what burned in. So I started with what had burned in. Um, right. If I did the test using UI elements, the test would have taken years. Like, they're just too small to have too much of an impact. Um, I could have, as Marcy says, Im imagine a journalist not doing the research in 2022. The thing is, he <laughs> he mentioned it because it was in the video. He did the research. It was yeah. just a weird way to word it because it makes me it makes it look like I didn't talk about it. Um, but anyway, uh, of course I'm going to have uh, criticism about an article written about me. <laughs> um. But anyway, it also would have burned in quicker if I picked one specific color. Like if I just had like a, a static, as red as it could be, uh, color like like square in the middle of the screen. Like that would have burned in the right. most because it would have just burned in the red, uh, uh, the red uh, sub pixels. Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, burn in is when one of so a pixel is made up of red, green, and blue. Uh, if one of those subpixel lights is on for too long, it will start to dim and burn out. So we're technically talking about burn out and not burn in, but it gets conflated. Right. Um, what we wanted to do today uh, was talk about what we think in celebration of in this celebration <laughs> of this m momentous or Malay event. <laughs> we're gonna. Pick what we think are the top 10 best games that you could use to burn in your OLED Switch. Because we had a topic. Top 10 games to play in portable mode. And I mean, you need to be in portable mode. Yes. If you're going to be burning in your screen. But it, now mm -hmm. we also have the added problem that there needs to be static UI elements. Yes. So, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind playing in portable mode, Stardew Valley. Does that have? Mm. Does that have things that could burn in on the screen? I believe it does. You know, somebody well, sent I, me I, somebody sent me a tweet of their screen of their TV that had burn in, and yeah. uh, the t the TV had a little face in the bottom corner, and I was like, "What the hell is that face?" And it turned out it was Piranha Plant for, from Smash Brothers. Really? <laughs> this is it. You you can vaguely make out Piranha Plant. Oh yeah. Like it like the it. icon. Yeah. So um Smash Brothers yes. is one of the ones that 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 you would use to that you could use to burn in your screen absolutely. I would say, you know, and I think you proved it, Breath of the Wild is a great candidate because uh, not only does you know the test you you ran, but you know the UI elements. You acquire a lot of UI elements yeah. in that game for a long period of time. And if you're one of those people who likes to play, you know, a game in you know the post-ending <laughs> fuckabout mode, where like after you beat the game, you just do whatever you want. Then yeah, you're gonna have just like a cacophony of UI elements on your screen that you can just leave there and burn in. Post-game fuck-around mode. That's a that's a Yassi, Yassi Croshaw. Oh, term. okay. I, I like that. that. I like it. But like, it's true. The post ending fuck about like when you beat the game, you got nothing to do. 
fuck about. <laughs> you do that a lot in this game. Uh, you yeah. do get a lot. You acquire a lot of UI elements in that game. Yeah. Like a cartoonish amount of UI elements. Yeah, they, they surround the screen. At the beginning, there's not that many. But then towards the end, yeah. they, they're, they're all over. Uh, is this a good picture? I'm trying to find a a picture of it for you people. Here we yeah. go. All this stuff, the divine beasts come up on the left. Uh, and then you get more hearts as you progress. Um, yeah. You get the little D-pad thing on the left. You get like I, a sound meter and a compass and a temperature gauge. and Yeah, and the map and stuff. Now, I didn't uh, include... Uh, I don't have the divine. I only have two divine beasts. I wasn't about to get yeah. the other two just to do this experiment. <laughs> Although I could have just taken a screenshot, but I, I wanted yeah. to start it using actual Breath of the Wild. It just became more of a pain in the ass, and I needed to use a screenshot. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Breath of the Wild, obviously. Uh, also, I would say uh, 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 Animal Crossing. Yes. So so. When I was starting this experiment, uh, I was actually going through a bunch of games. I didn't know which ones to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that one of the things that makes Smash Brothers a great contender is that you can play it for a million hours. It's my most played game on the Switch, and I don't even think I play it that much. Um, right. Breath of the Wild is another one. You can play that for thousands of hours. Animal Crossing mm -hmm. is definitely one that you can play for thousands of hours. The yeah. only issue with Animal Crossing is that the UI elements go away. Hmm. Now, your character, though, is always centered on the screen. Yeah. So that could easily burn in. But uh, mm -hmm. I think the only thing that... And, and I guess the colors, you, there would be a lot of green. Uh, but I think that the only reason this would be a good contender is because somebody will play this for 3,600 hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, so I got one, mm -hmm. and it's it's a bit of a curveball. But if you follow me, my logic makes sense. Okay, you know I'm I'm ready for the for the journey. Okay, the Namco Museum. Oh God. It, two reasons. One, a lot of times, a lot of like retro gaming collections and whatnot, they do this thing that I actually really hate is <laughs> in order to fill the 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 pillar boxing. Uh, they'll they'll fill it so there's no black on the other side of the screen. They'll give it like this really garish wallpaper. Yes. So and that just stays there for the entire game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's static. It doesn't move. And you can pick like a, any number of retro collections. The Genesis collection does this. Um, but I'm picking the Namco Museum for my second reason, and that is the reason why a lot of old TVs, like tube TVs, didn't want you playing video games on it. Because they were working under the assumption that they were old school arcade games that were single screen experiences. And the Namco Museum has a lot of single screen games like Pac-Man, uh, Galaga, Dig Dug, where, where you don't, you know, you know, it's not side scrolling. It's just one screen that you're on the whole time. And there's not a lot of UI elements, but like you play Pac-Man and you don't move. The outline of the maze is going to stay there. True. So, uh, that this happens with, this is the, I mean, it's different for arcade games because arcade games are susceptible to a lot of burn-in. You could see it in arcades. Yes. You go to an arcade and you see the burn-in because like you said, the level, the first level is going to be played thousands of times. Yeah. So the first that's, level and the title screen over like 40 years, that's going to get burned in eventually. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of these retro games have those borders. Oh, those static yeah. borders that are just a picture. Even the yeah. Mega Man Zero, Mega Man X, uh, original Mega Man collections, they all have stuff like that. And the Sega Classes collection has stuff like that. If that shit moved, that would be great. Uh, Nintendo Switch yeah. Online, those games all have a oh, border. Yeah. Those borders are gray, so it's not so bad. Um, yeah. But your icon in the top left would still burn in. Yeah. Would you be okay if I uh, met you in the middle here and just said retro game collections <laughs> yes yeah i'll take that i wanted to like find one that represented all of them mm -hmm. that's why i picked the namco museum but i think we can go broad and just say retro game collections in general yeah because that way it covers the nintendo it switch ones lot, yeah. yeah 
Um, okay, so we have four so far. We we, we need ten. Mm. Smash hard. Brothers, Breath of the Wild, Animal Crossing, Retro Game Collections, Mario Kart. Yeah, Mario Kart. Uh, what's Mario Kart look like? Oh, the the GTA trilogy. That's got just that big UI collection in the corner. Uh, so that would definitely burn in. Now, is this you know, if you can get it up and run it, eighteen hundred. Well, I guess so. It's open yeah. world. RGT right on the front page. <laughs> Come to Google search. Go. <laughs> and that game invented post-ending fuckabout. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, the map. Yeah. The bottom right. Yeah, the shit on the top right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll add that. GTA Trilogy. Uh, I want to see what Mario Kart 8 looks like, uh, though. I'm pretty sure Zizel, it's got like... Hmm? Zizel in the chat says Downwell. Now, Downwell, I can see being uh, contended for Burn-In... But I don't know, is Downwell a game you would want to play for 3,600 hours? See, the thing, the great thing about Downwell is that it is uh, like a roguelike kind of, like it's procedurally generated. Okay. But I'd say that is definitely one of the best games to burn in your phone. I can't see anybody playing this on the Switch for, for that one. Right. Uh, but, but for your phone, absolutely. I would play this thing on my phone for... I could see somebody playing this on a phone for 1800 hours or, or more. Yeah. Um, Mario Kart, it, the items in the top left are highlighted in yellow. Oh, this is only for the battle mode, though. Yeah. Uh, if they're highlighted in yellow, that's going to... Well, not yellow. Blue. The, the, the second player was highlighted in blue. Oh, wait, here we go. Oh, this is the battle. Is this the battle mode? It's highlighted in red. I don't know. If it's highlighted in a color for 3,600 hours, it will definitely burn in your Switch very easily. Yeah. Uh, also, too, like the the item itself won't be burned in, but the the circle that it's in will be burned in. So the so, item will keep changing. Yeah, but if if the item changes, uh, it could still be like an amorphous blob that burns in. You know, like right. like, like for Animal Crossing, your character is in the middle of the screen. It's not static in the middle of the screen, but it's always in the middle of the screen. So there will be a right. weird amorphous blob in the shape of a character that will stick in the middle of the screen. It right. happens with TVs. If people watch a lot of news, you'll see the like outline of a person burn in. Yeah. Um, why doesn't burn in happen on screens besides OLED? Uh, it's the way that they're made. Uh, yeah, LCD screens are are uh, liquid crystals for whatever reason. Oh, that's because they're backlit. It's because there's a panel of light that's just white behind uh, that's lit constantly lit behind the screen. That's why if you turn on an LCD screen or even a regular LED screen, uh, even if it's black, you can always tell that it's on because it's a constant light across the whole thing. On OLED screens, each pixel is lit. So each pixel is susceptible to dimming out. On a regular screen, yeah. it's just one big panel of light that's blasting at you. And each pixel is dimming that light. The pixels on OLEDs are individually lit. That's a nice way to say it instead right. of all the stuff that I just said. <laughs> um, uh, I'm seeing... I'm seeing the chat people recommending sports games like NBA 2K, Madden, FIFA. Uh, that's true. I'll give you FIFA because you know, people will play that for a thousand hours. Yeah. And you know what? They don't change that game. So even when the second one comes out a year later, <laughs> it's going to be the same freaking well, game. People play, uh, you know, people who are really into the sports games, they'll play it for 3,600 hours. No problem. What's a what's an so, RPG like a JRPG that people are gonna play for a long time? So I'm um, I was just browsing through the Nintendo eShop just now, and Pokemon came up, and I'm thinking Pokemon on its own, no. But if you spend a lot of time in the menu system of Pokemon, then yes, the battles because the menu system. If you're a competitive battles, battler yeah. in Pokemon, then you're absolutely gonna yeah. burn in your Switch. 
Because because those point. those UI elements, those giant rectangles are going to be on the screen for for thousands of hours. Yeah, I'm I'm also gonna throw Monster Hunter in there because that's yeah. a game you could play for thousands of hours, and there's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. uh, sitting on the screen. Doctor Disco says Pokemon Unite. That's also a good one. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think we could throw Pokemon on there twice. Yeah, because I mean. Because when I'm saying Pokemon, I'm thinking of like regular ass Pokemon, uh, the upcoming Scarlet and Violet, uh, Brilliant Diamond and Soul Sil uh, AJ's the fuck the other one is AJ's in the chat. Also, Treble can help me out. Um, which Pokemon game would you spend the most time on besides Unite? Minecraft. People are saying Minecraft. My Minecraft has UI. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have too many now? Did One, we? two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Because I got I put two Pokemons mm. on here. Yeah. Uh as of today, sword and shield easily. True. That's where that's okay. the, the biggest shiny hunting slash competitive battler. Sword and shield has competitive. Okay. Pokemon. Sword slash shield. Okay, so we need to remove one. Hmm. I guess FIFA then. Let me see what FIFA looks like. Or no, maybe my, maybe Minecraft, because its UI elements are really just that panel on the bottom. Um, I think there's a crosshair also. Mm. Well, in that case, like any F first person shooter, FIFA's got some pretty nasty UI elements. Yeah. You can just lump Pokemon together like retro games. They're so different. Though. Yeah. I'm a little... I'm a little... interested in... Uh... All right, well, let's take a look at these. Are these all good to play portably? Because that's, that's yes. the first well, thing we need, to, we need to think about. Maybe not Monster Hunter Rise, because that needs to be online. I mean, it doesn't have to be, True. but like you're gonna if you're playing it for thousands of hours, you're playing it online. Yeah, I'm taking Monster Hunter off. Okay. I mean, FIFA also needs to be online, but we'll let that slide. Uh, McFly or Die says not GTA. It's 15 frames per second. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm gonna. Well, this is also supposed to be best games to play portably. I'm taking GTA off because that game it runs yeah. like absolute shit on the Switch. Yeah. Why not Stardew Valley? That I had in a tab. That was going to be the first one I said, and I completely forgot about Stardew Valley. But also, I don't think well, Stardew Valley's at... UI stays on screen. It doesn't. I was just looking at screenshots. It doesn't. That was the first game I thought of today, and also when I was going to do this challenge, challenge when I was going to do this video, the first game I thought of was Stardew Valley, because I know people who spent thousands of hours playing that. And Animal yeah. Crossing. But neither of those games have UI elements that stay on the screen. So, uh, here's the list. We got Smash Brothers Ultimate, Breath of the Wild, Animal Crossing, uh, any retro game collection, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, FIFA, Monster Hunter Rise, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Pokemon Unite, and Minecraft. There you go. And, that, and that's the definitive list of games that you can play for 3,600 hours <laughs> <laughs> to finally see a little modicum of burn in on your on your nintendo yeah. switch yes did we move any out let us know in the chat yes you can let us know right now brutal beast says aren't the majority of switch users mainly portable i always play docked so that is weird to me we learned uh, this right it, it's split it's split 50 50 mm. isn't it uh, last i remember yes i think when they yeah it was like it was like two years after the switch came out they did it they they released like a like a like a study, and they said it was half and half. I think. Well, it was like it was like thirty percent was like docked, thirty percent was yeah. portable, and then thirty percent was both. I honestly, uh, I I am mostly docked, and I know you are mostly portable. Yes, what a pair we make! What a pair! Uh, it, back in twenty eighteen, Nintendo said the playtime for docked and undocked was about even. Damn. This is 2018. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. I wonder if that will have an effect on their next handheld. 
maybe or, or well, their next I mean, console in general like like i'm assuming it's not exactly even it's about even so in which way does it sway and how will that influence their next console uh 30 percent of early switch owners primarily use their system undocked less than 20 percent of owners are similarly primarily docked and if Nintendo found the majority of Switch owners do both. Who is that study from? Uh, it's from Nintendo. It's uh, They shared it with their investors. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. Yeah. I thought so, it was like a Nintendo Life thing or something. No. So it says, so a majority of people do both. And 30% are primarily undocked and 20% are primarily docked. I mean that's not that big of a difference. That's a pretty substantial difference. Well, if if the majority of players do both, and then you have thirty percent undocked and twenty percent docked, I don't think that's that big of a difference. Chad is. I mean that that might be why they put out a portable only Switch with the Switch Lite, right? And but also because that... having a cheaper alternative, they didn't they didn't have a handheld anymore because they were over the three DS right. by then, and having a cheaper alternative was a great idea. So. You know, but I don't think that is enough to, you know, sway how the next generation of Switch is going to go. You know, I think it'll still be a, a hybrid system. Yeah, I it probably won't focus one way the or the chat other. thinks that I mean, like, they're going to pick one and stick with it. That's not what I mean. Yeah. I mean, like, if most people use it portably, are they going to lean more towards its portability and care less about the dock in that situation? Um. Like, everybody thinks that they're going to have a dock that you can plug into and it's going to fucking uh, upscale everything to 4K and, and whatever. Uh -huh. I don't... Maybe they won't care so much about that because only 20% play it yeah. mostly docked. Or people thought maybe they would make a docked only, like a home console only version of the Switch. Yeah. Maybe they yeah, decided that that's not really worth while. it. Yeah. Anyway... Uh, notifications? What do we got? We got Luzzy yeah. Nillabean. Thank you for the four months. And we got Scott the Sloth. Thanks for three hundo bits. Do you think Nintendo will bring Game Boy to Nintendo Switch Online and will it be free or premium like N64? I really hope it comes. And I mean, I think any system that they release now will probably be in uh, the expansion pack. But Nintendo surprised us before, so I don't know. Well, I don't know if Game Boy would, because I feel like Game Boy, like, those are easier to emulate and, you know, develop than the N64 games. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if they made it free. I would I would be more surprised if they included it in the expansion pack. My question is, why haven't they done it already? Yeah. You know, it's been five years, and we're just now getting N64 games, when N64 games were available on the... We at launch when the virtual console launched. So, I, yeah, I just I don't, don't know. know why they haven't done it already. It seems like the easiest thing. I yeah. hope that the reason they haven't done it is because they're working on a classic console. I think that would be fucking awesome. Um, maybe they are, maybe they were working on a classic console and then realized this is more worth it having a subscription model. Yeah. And they scrapped it. Maybe that's why they didn't, they haven't made one yet. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are talking about Game Boy Advance. I think that that's like yeah. way too that's oh, that's looking way too far ahead. I I think <laughs> Game Boy is way easier. And also GameCube, they have the emulator already on the Switch. Yeah. Well, I mean, Game Boy Advance at this point, they all go hand in hand. Game Boy, mm -hmm. Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. So, I would say just do all three at at the same time. You know, speaking of Nintendo Switch Online. Yes, Bob. We have a new game coming in just a few days. Yes. Announced right before we went live. Nintendo of America Twitter account says race at speeds of over a thousand kilometers an hour. When F zero X comes to the Nintendo switch for a switch online plus expansion pack members on March, uh, March 11th for hashtag Nintendo 64 tag a friend or three at uh, tag a friend or three. You're going to race against online in the replies. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm i'm oh, I'm you tagging on, a friend or three i'm working on something here <laughs> F -Zero. 
Yeah! Can you hear this? Uh, I heard it and then it went out. <laughs> it does. Discord doesn't like music. Yeah. Is this the one with the? Yeah. But do sing the song. Not, not you. The, uh, with the fucking play the lyrics. Uh, this is this sucks. Okay. F zero. So yeah, it's coming to Switch. So this game's a big deal because yeah. uh, it's like one of the only uh, N64 games that runs at 60 frames per second. Yes. Uh, uh, so because of that, cool. it's it, really it, hard to emulate. Mm -hmm. Especially, they have this freaking four-player mode. Like, yeah, four-player online, too. Oh, so th that's true. That's a big deal. With Nintendo Switch Online, you could basically log into somebody else's console and, and play split-screen multiplayer with them. Yeah. This this is also this video is also in sixty frames and it's freaking me out right now. It looks crazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy they were able to emulate it. Hopefully, uh, people like to shit on Nintendo's uh, Switch Online emulation for for N64. So hopefully, mm -hmm. it's good. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some yeah. kinks because again, this is a very hard game to emulate. Uh, but we'll see yeah. in a few days, March 11th. We'll see. And you. Hopefully, you know, if people see if people play this enough and they tell Nintendo they like it, maybe they'll put out F Zero GX from the GameCube and maybe they'll make a new F Zero game. And maybe a monkey will fly out of my butt because that's not how Nintendo works. Yeah, you guys, everybody who complained about uh who's been complaining about them not making an F Zero game, you better fucking play this game. If you have the expansion pack, you better play this game. Cause they'll know, yeah. they'll see when this launches, they'll see how many people log into Nintendo Switch Online and click that F Zero button. I'll give it a try because I just barely ever played F Zero. I always play like yeah. thirty seconds of a track to s capture footage and then turn it off. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, news to me: there's a new eight bit do and uh, Xbox controller. Yeah, and it's like it's a full on Xbox controller. It's not. Well, like you that might have to go back to the PO box. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Yes, introducing the Design for Xbox 8-Bit Do Ultimate Wire Controller for Xbox. Ultimate control, style, and performance, uh, all for a great price. Customized button mapping, stick and trigger sensitivity, vibration control, and more with the 8-Bit Do Ultimate software on Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Windows, iOS, and Android. Tech Nanner in the chat says, wired only. Almost yes. all Xbox controllers are... Is all third-party wired only? Are there any all third, third party, party that are not? The only third party that I know of that are not wired are the Rock Band controllers. Okay. That's it. <laughs> as far as I know, maybe the Scuff controllers. As no, far I think, as I know, I think that they're also wired. Well, I mean, they're like $1,000, so I'd imagine <laughs> they could afford to make it. The reason is Xbox uses a proprietary wireless signal to communicate with the xbox system itself mm -hmm. and if you wanted to use it you'd have to license it and nobody wants to license it so they just don't so they just make it wireless instead i think that the scuff ones might be wireless but the weird thing about that is that i would only ever want to play a wire because <laughs> like, yeah. like for a scuff control you're doing it for performance you want the least latency possible but that yeah. might be why they decided to license uh the technology because they want the least latency possible right uh but yeah so now 8 do is making an actual xbox controller and it has um you can customize it in their ultimate software uh like you can for the sn30 pro plus Nailed it. Hold up. Uh, Scuff what? says their controller is wireless Bluetooth. But that means it wouldn't work on the, on the, uh, on it the wouldn't. Xbox. No. No. What the hell? Mm. Interesting. I'm thinking maybe uh, Microsoft just doesn't let people license their, their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but then why did Rock Band get to use it? But that was back in the 360, right? But they, there's a Rock Band on Xbox One. Did was that Rock wireless? Band Four? Yeah. 
Uh, wireless and wired connectivity options for any play style. What does it mm. mean, though? What type of wireless? It says Bluetooth. That can't work on the Xbox. Doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Is that for people PC? Are saying, uh, it, it people is are saying for... that people are saying that scuff controllers are just modded Xbox controllers already. Like they're officially official Xbox controllers that scuff mods themselves. But that doesn't necessarily mean that like all the innards are the same. Why doesn't it say then that it's wire? Why does it say wireless connectivity Bluetooth? Why doesn't it say wireless uh, whatever the fuck Microsoft calls their things? Yeah. Um, I need to get one of these things. I need to just suck it up and get one and see what happens. A scuff controller? Yeah, I kind of want one. Kevin Kenson made a video on it. I will just fucking DM him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you get a scuff controller, can I have your Elite controller then? No. The Elite controller is the, is the Master Chief one. It's sitting in the box. I'm, like, afraid to touch it. I know. <laughs> well, anyway, this, con controllers as it is. this controller is uh, $45, the uh, the Ape Do one. So it's pretty cheap. Yes. That's how much yes, uh, that their controllers usually go for. Yeah. That's what the uh, Ape Do Pro 2 is. Yes. I do like that it could use the software. The customizable software stuff is good. Although Xbox has a really good customization thing on the Xbox itself. In the system itself, yeah. Uh, the triggers look a little weird. I'm a little weirded out by by them. They yeah, look like big and and fat. But otherwise, I mean, the adjust the adjustable triggers is really cool. Uh, like I said, the button mapping. Uh, I think this is pretty yeah. good. I mean, for 45 bucks, I don't think you can go wrong. I mean, it's wired, but yeah. this is probably one of the best third-party controllers you can get for that cheap. Yeah. It also has um, back buttons that you can uh, program. It has a headphone jack with a mic off switch on it. That's pretty good. Uh, oh, it's got profile switching. You can save your settings on a game-by-game -game basis with the custom profiles and switch on the fly. There you go. That's something their 8 controller, I mean, the Pro 2 has also. So that's a good feature yes. to move over. I still think if you're getting an extra control, like I'm assuming you have an Xbox, you probably have an, a regular Xbox controller that came with the system. Yeah. But if you want to get an additional one, I still think their other Xbox controller might be more worth it. That's this, the one that looks like a Pro 2. Yeah. And this controller also... Uh, you know, plugs directly into your PC and you can use it as a PC controller. Yeah, so this one uh, I like a lot because um, you plug it in, it works, it has the D-pad in, in, in the comfortable spot if you want to play some retro games, mm -hmm. which is really, if I'm plugging in a controller that's not the uh, first-party controller, it's because I want the D-pad to be up there. I, I'm playing it for a different style of game. Um, yeah. So this is good for that. Also, uh... Uh, you can plug this into uh, an Xbox Series S if you have that modded to play uh, your your emulated games if you want to. Uh, yes. I, th I think that this one is probably a better buy, honestly, if you already have the first party controller laying around. And this one's also 45 I think. Yep, same price. Uh, I'm just looking up what Microsoft calls their proprietary wireless signal it's called like xbox it's wireless. just called xbox wireless yeah something like that. something stupid like yeah that. yeah because you can get you can get a usb dongle for your pc that transmits xbox wireless so it has better connection than bluetooth i haven't seen that since the xbox 360 days i i'm i'm on the official xbox website and you can buy a bundle with the controller and that dongle Shu J Sauce with 300 bits says, third time's the charm. Wanted to tell you, I found out you can use the 8 bit do arcade stick on Series X with the Wingman Xbox from Brook. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. I don't see any other notifications from you. Um, also, there's a lot of chat messages. If you write something in the chat and I don't see yeah. it, there's a lot of you people. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for the bits. Um, 
that is something that I would be interested in. I, I really like the 8-bit do arcade stick with, I have the modded one with the little keyboard controller situation. Um, and yeah, it says X mode, but that is X input for PC, which kind of, yeah, I wish it was Xbox mode. Uh, Wingman X B from Brooke. Brooke is like a board you put in a fighting stick that makes it, it's like the brain and it makes it be able to be read right. on other consoles and stuff. Wingman, I'm assuming is like a, an adapter of some sort. Yeah, here it is. So wait, that's pretty cool. I'm just looking because there's also the wi the Wired Pro 2 controller for Xbox. And that pretty that's what much I had has on screen. everything. The that's one with was, the handles. That's the one I, I, I was talking about that I think would be uh, more worth it. Because it's like, okay. the Pro, it's like the Pro 2 that I have for the Switch. but And it's the same price. Yeah. It's just not in the style of an Xbox controller. It's in the style of a friggin' right. uh, SNES controller. Oh, and they're both they're both the same price, the ultimate and the pro. Yeah. Huh. It's really just the style you want, and I still think it's more worth it, especially if you have the first party Xbox controller. Yeah. I think it's more worth it to get the uh the SNES styled one. If you're yeah. here watching this show, you probably know what I mean. Uh anyway. Where are we? All right. Uh, uh more news yes oh great we talked about grand theft auto before yes we were now we're talking about the new one or rather the old one that they're trying to pass off as the new one <laughs> <laughs> and they've been uh, doing that for how many years almost an entire decade <laughs> yes so first up gta 5 ps5 and xbox series x remaster offers a mix of four K, 60, frame 60 frames per second, and ray tracing. Uh, when Grand Theft Auto V makes the leap to current-gen consoles, the PS5 and Xbox Series X, in March, oh, that's this month, the newest version of Rockstar's uh, Crime Epic will offer three graphical settings that will let players tailor their experience to their needs. On Friday, Xbox detailed just how the PS5 and Xbox Series X versions uh, of the expanded and enhanced GTA V will perform across both platforms. GTA 5's fidelity mode is tuned for the highest visual quality and targets 30 frames per second. Uh, the PS5 and Series X versions will run with native 4K resolution with ray tracing enabled. On the Series S, fidelity mode will be delivered upscaled 4K resolution. Ga uh, the game's performance mode is tuned for the most responsive gameplay experience and targets 60 frames per second. On the PS5 and Series X, that 60 frames per second gameplay will run at upscaled 4K, while on the Series S, it will run at 1080p. Performance RT mode is exclusive to the PS5 and Series X, delivering a hybrid of the previously mentioned modes with upscaled 4K, ray tracing, and 60 frames per second target. Uh, Rockstar reiterated its broader visual improvements to GTA 5, including faster load times, improved lighting, shadows, and water reflections, and increased population, traffic variety, and vegetation density. Suitably, the new version of GTA 5 will also include highly detailed new explosions. Oh. Gotta get them explosions in. Wow. On the PlayStation 5, Rockstar also highlighted new DualSense haptic feedback and adapted trigger features. Players will feel new sensations like water effects, uh, directional damage, road surfaces, and suitably explosions. Uh, Rockstar also announced that players will be able to carry over their GTA 5 story saves and GTA Online progress to the PS5 and Series X versions, and that one-time transfer carries cross-generation and cross-platform. As of Friday, players can upload their save progress through the Rockstar Games Social Club. Uh, the enhanced and expanded versions of GTA 5 comes to the PS5 and Series X March 15th digitally with physical, version, physical versions arriving in April. GTA 5's remastered versions were announced in June 2020 and were originally slated for release last year. The original games were released on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 in September 2013. So yeah, almost a decade ago. Uh, I want to backtrack a little bit. This just in from the Beanie Man himself. Mm -hmm. 
scuff controllers do use wireless xbox uh, oh, because, okay. because like the chat That's said they are just heavily modified xbox controllers all right okay that makes um, sense anyway uh the big deal about this grand theft auto thing is that it's cheaper so so okay so i just read what the enhancements were okay and i couldn't give two fucks okay. that they're enhancing this game for the seventh time well, okay, so that, the enhancement news came out on the 4th. Okay. Four days later, on the 8th, Rockstar has revealed the pricing for GTA 5 and GTA Online on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. We now know for sure that the games won't be offered as free upgrades to existing owners, but they will be at least 50% off on all new gen platforms for the first three months of launch. Instead of the preloading starting today, pricing for all the new versions of GTA 5 and GTA Online is now live on the PlayStation Store and the Microsoft Store and confirms that there will be no free upgrades available for those who bought the games on previous console generations. However, so there are However, there are significant discounts on all platforms within the first three months of release. You can see the pricing for all the new versions of GTA 5 and GTA Online below. Okay. On the, on the PlayStation 5, GTA 5 will be 75% off for the first three months after launch. Priced at $9.99 US, $8.75 British pounds, uh, $14.99 Australian dollars. After three months, the game will cost forty dollars U.S., thirty-five British pounds, and sixty dollars Australian. This version of the game includes the single-player story mode and GTA Online. The standalone version of GTA GTA Online for PS5 is completely free for the first three months of release on PS5. After the, for the first three months, the standalone GTA Online will be twenty dollars U.S. 18 British pounds and 31 Australian dollars. You're getting all this. It's a lot, Will. You just said a lot. All right. It's 75% off on GTA 5 and uh, on GTA 5. It's 75% yes. off on PlayStation 5 and only 50% yes. off for Xbox Series X for the first yes. three months of the launch. Yes. And this is an up. This Remember, this is an upgrade price to the game you have to already own. GTA. GTA 5 on Xbox Series oh, X and this S is will be just for off. this is just, this is just for, for the upgrade the, the modified explosions. Yes. <laughs> okay. So um, I understand. Own, oh, the upgrade price on Xbox for the first three months will be twenty dollars US, eighteen dollars British, eighteen British pounds, and thirty Australian dollars. After three months, the games will cost. 40, the games will cost the same. $40 US, $35 British, and uh, $60 Australian. So if I just um, bought this game already, like last week, yes, I need to pay for the upgrade. Yes. You need, to, you need to pay for the upgrade. You essentially have to buy the game again. If you already own the game, Rockstar will give you a discount. However, the discount is different depending on what system you buy it for. If you're upgrading from PS4 to PS5, you only have to pay ten dollars within the first three months. Mm -hmm. If you're upgrading from Xbox One, I to understand. Series X, you have to pay twenty dollars. I you keep saying that. I'm just trying to make it simpler for people because I, I don't know how much more simpler I could have gotten. It is for Christ's sake. <laughs> it's cheaper on PlayStation. There it's you go. Cheaper on PlayStation for three months. There you go. Easy peas. Why it's cheaper on PlayStation, I don't know. I think that Sony must have thrown a lot of money at them in order for that to happen. Because yeah, also, fucking nine not, years ago. <laughs> not to make not to make this more confusing, but oh, please GTA do. on GTA Online for the first three months will be free on PlayStation Five, but ten dollars on Xbox One. I you know Xbox tried really hard to make this transition as seamless as possible and as pro-consumer as possible moving from yes. last generation to this generation 
Mm-hmm. So, so it's kind of like a huge fuck you for Rockstar to be like, here you go, this is going to cost more on Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't... It's not cool. Mm-mm. And it, <sighs> Rockstar has, like, it, the past few years, I guess for a long time, have, like, treated their games as, like, prestige works of art. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're, they're, they're fucking games about, you know, criminals and dick jokes and what i mean so. i was all on board until this game came out and then they did fuck all after that <laughs> yeah um so yeah i don't know um so i played this game when it came out in 2013 yeah and this was the, the ps3 yeah this was the second grand theft auto game i ever beat the first one i ever beat was grand theft auto 2 on our family computer <laughs> yes this was the only Grand Theft Auto game I ever beat. This was the only Grand Theft Auto game I ever really liked. Because it was the only one that controlled well. All the other ones before that controlled like garbage. Nobody wanted to admit it because you can beat up hookers and all. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, that's cool, dude. Yeah. But yeah, I do I do agree. I, I, this was uh, a very good game. It's, yeah. the, th- the thing that really turned me off was that the game then immediately came out for PlayStation 4. And yeah. all my friends rebought it for PlayStation 4 to play online. And I was like, I already bought it and beat the story and my shit's not going to transfer. I think yeah. they did have a, they, they had a weird way to transfer I think that stuff, was only, but it took I think a while. Was only for, I think that was only for GTA Online. Oh yeah, and I didn't even start that. I had a story mode yeah. that I wanted to transfer over, even though it didn't yeah. really matter. I remember it was a weird thing to transfer. Um... And uh, that really turned me off, so I just never played it again. And still yeah. to this day, I'm like mad that that I played it on PlayStation Three when I could have just waited like a month and played it on PlayStation Four. Yeah. Um, Although at the same time, like Grand Theft Auto, that's a game like you can't wait to play because like everyone's going to be playing it at yeah. launch, and you want to be part of that conversation. That's how they get you. It's true. Uh, so yeah, I was mad at I, that's what that soiled the the whole rest of the nine years for me. If if I played Grand Theft Auto online right after I beat the game, I feel like I'd be into Grand Theft Auto because the online looks really cool. When I see other people playing yeah. it, when I see people role playing in it, when I see people uh doing the weird like car tracks and stuff, it looks really fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wasn't gonna buy it again for another sixty dollars. Uh, now they're out here selling it for the fifth time. For the new yeah. for the newest console, it's ridiculous. And I do like Rockstar, yeah. and I do think that they make some really like crazy, well developed, yeah, artful great, games. Great games, yeah. But uh they haven't since Grand Theft Auto Five. <laughs> they just keep re releasing Grand Theft Auto Five. Well, that's not true. They made Red Dead Redemption Two, a game so that. ludicrous it made me wish it was Red Dead Redemption One. Yeah, I I liked Red Dead Redemption 2. I just think that uh, I was in a different place in my life where I didn't have the uh, capacity to... The, the time or the energy. Also, yes. it's not your fault because that game is over-designed. Mm-hmm. There's too much stuff in that game and most of it is useless. I never upgraded anything in that game. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to watch your weight. I didn't do that. <laughs> you have to upgrade your satchel in order to carry more stuff. I never did that. You know, it's just, it, they tell you to go fishing. I did that once when the story told me to. You know, it's it's a game with all this, like, busy work and garbage in it when it it's absolutely unnecessary. And it takes away from a lot of, like, the story and the beauty of the overall experience. I really liked the first Red Dead Redemption. Uh, first one is one of my favorite games. Yeah. One of my favorite games of all time. And then the second one I was very excited for, and then I just burnt out on it, like, very yeah. quickly. After like 10 I took hours, a, maybe. I took a break from the first one, from the second one, rather, to play Resident Evil 2 Remake. And I played that like multiple times. because That game is phenomenal. And then I finally went back to Red Dead because I'm like, I will beat this game come hell or high water. And I did. I'm like, all right, that's cool. So should I just I look rave- up the ending on YouTube? <laughs> oh, there. <sighs> yeah, but there's four end, four endings. I thought I had five fingers. Does it end four times or are there four different endings that you could get? There's four different endings you can get. They're all the same with like slight variants. Okay. Maybe I don't care as much as I thought. Yeah. (laughs) But then it ends and then there's two epilogues. 
All right, well, the, the so, epilogue in Res uh, Red Dead Redemption 1 is one of the best endings of any video game ever. <laughs> yes, uh, the, the two epilogues of Red Dead Redemption 2 set up Red Dead Redemption 1, and it's like, I don't really need this. Oh, God. All right. Anyway, uh, Kate, thank you for the 23 months. I'm late because work, but 23 months. Hey, thank you, Kate. I saw hey. in the chat you were upset that that didn't pop off. Did it just finally go off, or did you write that like an hour ago? What happened? Yeah. Explain yourself. Uh, anyway, we got more news to talk about. Uh, yes. This one's a wacky and wild one, baby. This, yeah. Uh, Bandcamp has been bought by Epic Games. Yeah. This is from Ethan Diamond, Bandcamp co-founder and CEO. I'm excited to announce that Bandcamp is joining Epic Games, who you may know as the makers of Fortnite and the Unreal Engine and champions for a fair and open internet. Bandcamp will keep operating as a standalone marketplace and music community, and I will continue to lead our team. The products and services that you depend on aren't going anywhere. We'll continue to build Bandcamp around our artists first revenue model where artists net an average of 82% of every sale and you'll still have the same control over how you offer your music. Bandcamp Fridays will continue as planned and the daily will keep highlighting the diverse, amazing music on the site. However, behind the scenes, we're working with Epic to expand internationally and push development forward across Bandcamp from our basic, from our basics like album pages, mobile apps, merch tools, payment systems, and search and discovery features to newer initiatives like our vinyl pressing and live streaming services. Since our founding in 2008, we've been motivated by the pursuit of our mission, which is to help spread the healing power of music by building a community where artists thrive through the correct support from their fans. That simple idea has worked well with payments to artists and labels closing in on a billion dollars U.S., and while over the years we've heard offers from other companies want, who wanted us to join them, we've always felt that doing so would only be exciting if they strongly believed in our mission, uh, were aligned with our values, and not only wanted to see Bandcamp continue, but also wanted to provide the resources to bring a lot more benefit to the artists, labels, and fans who use the site. Epic ticked all of those boxes. We share a vision of building the most open, artist-friendly ecosystem in the world. And together, we'll be able to create even more opportunities for artists to be compensated fairly for their work. Whether you joined Bandcamp recently or have been with us since the beginning, 14 years ago, thank you for being a part of this incredible community. We look forward to serving you um, for many years to come. So Bandcamp is a website where a lot of musicians post their music. It's like SoundCloud, yes. but it's called Bandcamp. Uh, Bandcamp to me seems more like a, like a like a rock and roll thing. Like SoundCloud sounds like to me uh, rappers or DJs or individual artists, and Bandcamp to me sounds more like uh, full bands, rock bands, and they sell. <laughs> EPs and stuff on there or their own CDs. I I do think you're you're hitting something where there's a lot more like traditional rock bands on mm -hmm. Bandcamp as opposed to SoundCloud. It's more like, you know, DJs and like electronic music and whatnot. Um but yeah, I Bandcamp is cool. I've bought things from Bandcamp before from different artists. Um I've used Bandcamp know. to upload. Uh There you go. <laughs> back in 2016 here we go you can listen to the album lion share by bywater here it is right now <laughs> this is me playing drums there you go there it is uh there's a little preview <laughs> uh, otherwise i know nothing about bandcamp that was the last time i have ever been a part of anything on bandcamp was 2016 i've i mean i've I know I've heard nothing but good things about Bandcamp from artists who use it. Um, like like the blog post said, eighty two percent revenue share. That's pretty good. Um, and you know, pe the people will post their music for like good prices and stuff. What I want to know is, what the hell is Epic gonna do with this? Like, why do they need to buy Bandcamp? What what possible use could they have for this? It could be a podcast thing. I remember Kind of Funny like, was on Bandcamp like when they launched. Yeah. Um, they used that as like hosting, I think. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm a little confused. Maybe it's a music thing. I mean, doesn't Epic have like a library of music for some reason? 
Maybe. Maybe they're trying to uh, put a stranglehold on indie band music. <laughs> like independent artists. They're trying to use their stuff. I don't know. I don't know, man. It just... This looks like a waste of money for them. Like, this doesn't look like it's going to hurt Bandcamp in any sense of the word. But, like, Epic makes video games and only video games like they, they don't really do anything else it's right. not like microsoft who like has a hand in everything or even like sony who has a hand in like movie production and tv making and headphone making well and video game i will okay. say epic does have a handle in in movie production because of the unreal engine true they have they do a lot of uh uh, graphics work and the whole, you know, the whole, uh, uh, like the way the Mandalorian was shot, how it's like live green screen. Yes. yes. But that is still like, that's still software technology development. That's still within the realm of what they do. And if you look at their acquisitions in the past, like they've, they've acquired psionics who developed rocket league. Speak of the devil. They uh, acquired harmonics who make rock band uh, Rad Game Tools, a company that makes a variety of middleware solutions for video games. Uh, Hypersense, a digital face animation company. Uh, it's a lot of like, you know, tech based companies. Bandcamp is a store for music. I think they definitely just got a deal. <laughs> they probably got <laughs> this, they probably got Bandcamp for nothing. And yeah. it could be a licensing thing. Maybe it could be a rock band situation. You know, Dragon Maybe. Force was nobody until freaking uh, 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 Guitar Hero. True. Anyway, Luabic in the chat says, imagine Bob getting DMCA'd by his own drumming. That literally happened. <laughs> Kirk Fogg's African Adventure. Yes. I played a song and then the YouTube video got DMCA'd and I, you know, yelled at the rest of the band about it and nobody cared. Because that just means somebody in the band claimed it. Like, somebody in the band yeah. licensed the music. And it's like, hey, did anybody know that this guy licensed our music and is getting money every time it gets played somewhere? And nobody cared. I was like, that doesn't bother anybody? Yeah. It's probably like 10 cents, like a month, but still. Yeah, but still. I post a video and now he gets the money from that revenue? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh... Weird, weird that Bandcamp bought this, but uh, maybe we'll yeah. find out soon. Maybe they'll release a freaking uh, music game. Maybe they'll use this maybe. as a podcasting service. Maybe they just wanted the technology for some weird reason. Maybe. Who knows what's going on in Epic Games headquarters? Uh, there's a lot more stories. Can we? Yeah. Can we get rid of some? All right. Which ones do you want to get rid of? Um. Hmm. Let's talk right now. While we're talking about podcasts, let's talk right uh -huh. now about uh uh let's talk right now about YouTube paying podcasters to film their shows. Uh all right, where'd I, you move it? I moved it to right under Epic. Okay. Because I like yes, to keep Let's sequential. do that. Because well, I heard that you had some beef about this. <laughs> I guess it's not really beef. It's just like you know, eh, all right. Let's read the article. Because I know you, know, you might, you might, you know, think maybe you it might have come to your attention that maybe we, maybe we're on YouTube and we also do podcasts. So yes. maybe, maybe this and would like, be good why have, for us. Why haven't we? Uh, why haven't we been told about this? One, two. We are willing to sell out completely. If you <laughs> want us we? to leave Twitch and move over. Oh no! Yes, absolutely, we. absolutely. If 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 they if YouTube even asked us to just post this on YouTube exclusively, we would be like, whatever you want, YouTube, Daddy YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can give two fucks about Twitch, not the community. <laughs> you guys are great. I love you, guys, you all. You're all. It's fine. it's just Twitch is is just a garbage. Uh, it's a garbage oh, fire. You would just have to put up a new uh, uh, type in a new URL. That's all you'd have to do. That's all you'd have to do. Uh, YouTube is reportedly offering money to podcasters in a bid to get them to create video versions of their shows. According to a report from Bloomberg, people close to the situation told Bloomberg that YouTube is offering individual shows 50,000 
$50,000 and up to $300,000 for podcasting networks, potentially to fund limited, sorry, to potentially fund filmed episodes and other video based content. I'm so worked up that we haven't been asked to do this already. $50,000? Despite being, I know, up to $300,000. I have college to think about for two oh, it kids. Says podcast networks. We are notably not a network. I will start another podcast and then we'll technically be a network. <laughs> How do we get a network? How do we start a network? <laughs> well, despite being on a platform for video, the Google owned YouTube hosts a number of popular podcasts, including the A Street Podcast, uh, Full Send Podcast, and the Logan Paul led Impulsive. It even helped Sick. foster the growth of the controversial Joe Rogan experience, which Spotify purchased back in 2020 uh youtube has been making small advances towards pleasing listeners on the platform in october it began offering all canadian users to listen f- to audio without having the app open a feature previously only available in youtube premium subscribers oh around the same time youtube also hired kai chuck to lead the company's podcasting efforts although spotify already supports a video podcast Getting popular shows to make accompanying videos that are perhaps exclusive to the platform could help build an audience that wants more than just audio. So, um, I did listen to Joe Rogan before he switched to Spotify. And then, notably, mm-hmm. not every time, just whenever he had like a guest on that I was interested in. And then right. when he switched to Spotify, I have a Spotify subscription. I could, I could have totally listened to it. I just had never listened again. And then the pandemic right. happened, and then you got a little crazy, and then we don't want to talk about yeah, it. And things happen. <laughs> um, but for whatever, yeah, so I think the, YouTube is a great place for podcasts. I listen, I listen oh, yeah. to all of my podcasts pretty much exclusively on on YouTube, unless they're unless they're only on a different platform. Because I have YouTube Premium, and YouTube Premium is great. You could just turn the screen off and listen to it like a podcast. And even in general, like long form YouTube comment uh, content is like becoming much more common than it used to be like you know people will watch video essays that are like hour two hours long i have like saved an h bomber guy uh video essay on deus x that's three hours long i don't know when the fuck i'm gonna watch that (laughs) but sure it'll be interesting yeah very weird i i hear that youtube's pushing podcasts but i think it's mostly because they like long form stuff but it's weird because youtube likes long form content they want your watch time. If you get people good, if you get good watch time and you keep people on YouTube for a really long time, they will uh, yeah. uh, they will give you more money. They, they like that. They want to uh, reward that. However, they are also working on promoting short form content like TikToks, like oh, like things yes, around a minute shorts. long. Yeah. yeah. So what the fuck, guys? Like pick one. Like what do I do? I don't know what to do. Do do you want me to post videos that are like hours long or do you want me to post videos that are a minute long? I don't understand. And I'm a, a fucking actual YouTuber. So my videos are like 10 minutes long. Is that okay? Yeah. Or is, is that all right? Can I keep doing that? You got it. No, you have to do both at the same time. You have to do a 3-hour version of your episode and a 2-minute version of your episode. Yeah. Yeah, no, for real. And it, it's exhausting. Yeah. The way that they keep like flip flopping this shit, so I don't know. It's it's uh, I don't, I have I don't know what any of this means. I I don't I don't yeah. I don't know how this fits for us. But uh, we're a podcast on YouTube. How do we cash in on this yeah. three hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> yes. Uh, f- and again, we are more than willing to sell out. Uh, to be exclusive to you. Uh, if we are not above that. Remember, kids, selling out is cool. <laughs> everybody I, does it eventually i did a sh- random stream a few weeks ago on uh youtube.com slash wolf den clips uh just to see what would happen and a lot of you guys were there and i very much appreciate it and it, f- it honestly felt almost exactly like twitch so <laughs> i i have i have I, i'm i'll sell out tomorrow i don't care yeah uh brutal beast asks can you call your second podcast to wolf to den uh yes yes, yes we, we can, can. <laughs> yes we can uh kate brought, brings up a good point she says uh the real question is will they make youtube video youtube views actually count towards podcast numbers now so that's not really youtube's fault it's more the fault of advertisers and these like conglomerates like chartable and wherever these like advertisers get their podcast charts yeah. 
Um, for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't really count as a, a view for a podcast when you're like selling it to uh, to advertisers. Um, even though it totally it totally should. I mean, hopefully now if if YouTube gets more serious with podcasts, it basically if YouTube makes a YouTube podcasting app instead of YouTube Music, then people might start mm. listening. Uh, really, they should just turn Google Podcasts into Google into YouTube Podcasts. I'm That's surprised they, they haven't do. already. Yeah. Uh, so if they do that, then absolutely. It should be that uh, if you want to listen to just the podcast version, it should just give that to you, you know, instead of the yeah. YouTube video. Like, why not? Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, that would help us tremendously because we're mostly YouTubers. Yes. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's jump around a little bit here. What do we All want right. to talk? About? Uh, f- well, real quick, we can just show you uh f- the counter argument to how GTA is handling next gen upgrades. Resident Evil two, three, and seven are coming to the PS five and Xbox Series X and S. For free, if you already own the fucking games, <laughs> all three games will be all three games will be given the upgrade treatment, including ray tracing, high frame rate, and 3D audio. PS5 players will also experience haptic feedback with DualSense controllers. Anyone who already owns the games on previous consoles will be able to upgrade for free, be it on the PS4 to digital PS5 upgrade option or through Xbox Smart Delivery. PC players will also be able to download a free upgrade patch. All. Uh, these three Resident Evil games are among the most popular in the series. RE7 presents a fresh start for the series when it was released in 2017 due to first-person perspective and return to horror roots. Resident Evil 2 and 3, meanwhile, were crit- critically acclaimed remakes of the PlayStation classics following series favorites Leon Kennedy and Jill Valentine, quite literally with over-the-shoulder camera. Uh, f- There's no confirmed release date yet, but these upgraded versions are set to be the best possible ways to experience these games. So rather than having you to pay for the games again, Capcom's like, here you go. Yo, I only played a little bit of Resident Evil 2, the remake. Uh, great oh, game. God, it's only played a little fantastic. bit. Fantastic. William Birkin so looks fucking awesome in this, <laughs> yeah. this screenshot. Oh, yeah. Dude. He looks crazy. Uh, and then, yeah, I so maybe I will jump back into that. Uh, do I yeah, have I, Resident I Evil would... 7? Wasn't that a Xbox Games with Gold at one point or something? Uh, I don't, it might have been a PS Plus game. Oh, I know we have the physical, have it... don't we? I bought it digitally on Xbox. Oh, I thought we had a... I, no. I might have gotten it. I gotta look. Um, but yeah, that uh, that I, I do yeah. want to play Resident Evil 8. I'm never going to play any of these games. I got to stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would love to play Resident Evil 8, but it's in the back of my list. Yeah, exactly. I would love to play Resident Evil 3 because I never really got to play Resident Evil 3. But let's talk about the update to the Nintendo Switch online app. Yes. Who cares? <laughs> I sure don't. Who's opening this app? This uh, app is such a missed opportunity. It really is. Uh, Nintendo Switch Online app has been upgraded to version 2.0.0 this morning with a whole new slew of changes that are absolutely for the best. This is the biggest overhaul for the Switch for the app since it launched back in 2017. It follows the recent missions and rewards updates to Switch Online. Here are the patch notes, um, courtesy of the Nintendo via the App Store. The app's overall design has been updated. You can now see which which of your friends are online. You can change your online status settings. Uh, You can view your friend code and other minor changes have also been implemented. Additions like seeing your friend code, which you can now copy and paste instead of laboriously typing out all 12 digits, or even see if your friends are online without turning on your switch are really simple on the surface, but are nice little updates. But the new look is classy and much more user-friendly than the original design. Hopefully, the app will receive more updates down the line and more games will be implemented to the service. The app has some neat, quirky ideas, but have been running. But having to run voice chat through it for select games has always been a grind. Yeah, I don't think I've opened the Switch app since I got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I always talk about this whenever the Switch Online app gets mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. So it's basically only for voice chat. Like there's other stuff you can do in it, but 
it's it's the, the main feature is voice chat. Nobody wants to fucking do yeah. voice chat on this stupid app. I, everybody would much rather just use Discord. Even if they got to plug in a phone, you could just do that on Discord. Yeah. You're not relegated to specific games either. Um, I remember in the Xbox 360 days, there was an Xbox 360 app. And I used to sit on that app and just look at who's online. And I would look at my yeah. little avatar and just stare at it. It was freaking awesome. It, it was it was an unofficial app too. And then Xbox really? got wise and made made an official app. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So it's unfortunate that they don't just have something like that. Like even if you could just browse the store. Like <laughs> I feel like Yeah, that's like the biggest thing. Like I you mostly use the Xbox app and the PlayStation app to browse the store. And like you can't even do that on the Nintendo one. So apparently this this update now lets you view friends who are online. Now you can do yes. that. Yay, yeah. finally. It only took friggin' five years. Yeah. And uh hey, no one's online right now. <laughs> um change your online status things. That's pretty great. View your friend code, yeah. thank God. Like th like this is actually a pretty decent update. But still, this app, it's been so long this app is still synonymous with that garbage voice chat feature. What I, I want to like know is Go ahead. I feel like the only way they can make people want to use this app is to either get rid of the voice chat or make it a separate app. Yeah. What I want to know is, it says here, game-specific services, and there are three games. Animal Crossing, uh, Smash Brothers, and Splatoon 2. You mean to tell me this service has been around for how long and only three games have specific functionality in this? Like, you couldn't add Mario Kart, uh, specific Mario Kart functionality? You couldn't add, like, Monster Hunter specific functionality to it. Like you couldn't expand upon it beyond those three games. So the Mario Kart functionality is literally just it has the voice chat. Right. But like it says Smash Brother Smash Brothers is listed as like has specific functionality to it. What is what can so you I guess do like, in Smash? It looks like you can share clips and stuff. Oh, that's pretty cool. That might be a but, useful but, feature. It, right. But what I'm saying is, why is it just three games? Why haven't Nintendo like done it with other games? I'm gonna I'm that, gonna play around with the app. I'm gonna see if it's gotten any better since the first time I looked at it and then never looked at it again. Right. I mean it still looks pretty bare bones compared to the other ones. True. No, it definitely there's not there's not much going on yeah. in there. But I mean sharing clips and smash is kind of a huge deal. I'd be very interested in yeah. that. They have a way for you to download clips to your phone, but it's like an ass backwards way. You got to scan two QR codes. Yeah. Meanwhile, on both Xbox and PlayStation now, you can just, it just automatically shows up on your phone when you take a screenshot. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. Uh, Hey, Will, as you know, Xbox only sold 2.3 million systems in Japan. Yes, total. Across the entire Xbox life, in 20 Yikes. years, Microsoft has only sold 2.3 million wait, Xboxes wait, in Japan. Wait, every Xbox? From every Xbox. Holy shit, that is not oh. cool. Uh, Weekly Fam Famitsu did a big anniversary article that looks back at the past 20 years of Xbox in Japan. It contains a number of interesting data points, such as local lifetime sales for each Xbox console. Though the original Xbox... In Japan only, the original Xbox sold 472,000 units. That's so sad. The Xbox 360 sold 1,616,000 units. The Xbox One, ready? The Xbox One sold 114,000 units. <laughs> And the Series X and S combined have so far sold 142,000 units. That's a grand total of 2.3 million units for four different platforms over 20 years. In comparison, the original Xbox sold over 24 million units globally, and the 360 sold over 84 million globally. To put Xbox Japan sales in perspective, Domestically, Sony sold 19 million PlayStation 1s and 24 million PlayStation 2s in Japan. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, just just one PlayStation life cycle just eclipses this. So, remember when I mean, Platinum Games... Like Microsoft, 
remember when Platinum Games was going to make an Xbox exclusive game? Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> and that I wonder why apart. that didn't happen. Yeah. I mean, you hear the meme of like, you know, Xbox doesn't do well in Japan, but to see the numbers, like, yeah, it's bad. It, it's still shocking. It's very bad. Uh, it does list that the best selling games for the original Xbox were Dead or Alive 3, uh, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball, Halo, Dead or Alive Ultimate, and Ninja Gaiden. So. Mostly uh, Team Ninja games and the original Halo. <laughs> yeah, Microsoft uh, didn't hit it with uh, Japanese developers, it looks like. No. Uh, hey, I don't care. I, I love my Series X. I think it's great. Yes. I Here's no a problems. fascinating one. The biggest selling Xbox One game in Japan is Titanfall 1. Damn. That's That's interesting. Apex Legends is really big in Japan. Is it now? Yes. It's because of the mechs. For Titanfall, it's because of the True. mechs. That makes a lot of sense. True. Um, so, yeah. And also, in Japan, if people want to play these games, they're just going to do it on PC. They all got PCs already. Yeah. They're just going to do that. Uh, declining sales meant that Microsoft started skipping Japanese gaming events, but in recent years, the company has sounded much more bullish on the country than in previous generations. Japan is our fastest growing region worldwide, said Xbox exec Phil Spencer in a pre recorded message for the 2020 Tokyo Game Show. We learn from the past. The past is littered with disappointment, so there's definitely a lot to learn. And uh, it does look like the Series X and S is selling more than the Xbox One did. Yeah, it looks like it's doing pretty good, but I think that also okay. could just be that video games are doing re uh, way better than they used to. Yes. It doesn't necessarily. I mean,. Sure, Xbox is doing better, but also it's probably just video games in general are doing better. If you compare that against the other yeah. numbers, I'm sure they're all even even huge too uh, across the other platforms. Yeah. Um. Anyway, why don't we wrap it up with talking about God of War? Okay. Uh, there is apparently a God of War TV show in the works. Uh, according to Deadline, Amazon is in negotiations to get the show off the ground. This would be a huge acquisition for Amazon if it goes through, According, uh, adding it to Prime Video's growing original catalog, uh, which includes Wheel of Time and Lord of the Rings. Uh, according to sources close to Deadline, the Expanse's executive producers, Mark Fergus and Hawk Obsty, uh, along with Wheel of Time executive producer, Raf Judkins, would be collaborating with PlayStation Productions and Sony Pictures Television for the new show. A God of War TV show or movie has been in the works for quite some time, but back in spring of 2021, a Sony spokesperson said there won't be a God of War adaptation anytime soon. We've reached out to Sony to comment on this story. Uh, Amazon Studios is building up its portfolio of game adaptations with a far with a Fallout TV series in fart. the works, starring starring Walton Goggins as the lead, uh, in the lead role. Additionally, there have been rumblings of a Mass Effect TV show, which has been in the works for quite some time through Amazon Studios as well. Together with Amazon's growing list of high-profile content, it's quickly becoming a go-to source for content with shows based on well-beloved properties like Wheel of Time and the upcoming Lord of the Rings series, a series which has cost a whole lot of money to create. Um, they did, PlayStation did say they were trying to get... Uh into movies for, yes. for, 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 uh, for their video games IPs. Yes. So this uh, is, this is pretty interesting. Uncharted, the Uncharted movie is the first attempt at that. I actually, no, I think the Ratchet and Clank would technically be the first attempt. And then Uncharted is like the big step. Cause it's got, you know, big budget Hollywood production and big budget Hollywood stars. Um, right. Uh, anybody see it? <laughs> anybody <laughs> see it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I still think that it's it. I, they haven't. Nobody has proven video game movies are gonna do good. There's like a no. few here and there. It's like the early days of comic book movies. There's like a few that are good, and then most of them are garbage. And uh, yeah, they just did Uncharted, and that was not good. Yeah. So, so I mean, maybe this will be different if Amazon puts like the right people behind it and throws the right amount of money. They're spending. A billion dollars to make that Lord of the Rings show. It is the most expensive television show of all time. They have they are spending a 
billion dollars on it for the whole series. That, that has potential to, to do fantastic, though. It's, it's because yes. they're looking at old Lord of the Rings movies and they're looking at uh, 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 Game of Thrones. And they're like, yes. these did great. Ga- Let We can do that. Yeah. Yeah, no, game, definitely Game of Thrones. I like Game of, Game of Thrones hit. Uh, Netflix put out The Witcher, and now Amazon is fighting back with Lord of the Rings. Waiting, waiting for that Hulu version of whatever they decide to adapt. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm probably never gonna watch this. I'll watch the trailer and go, "Oh, it looks good," and then yeah, about it. I still haven't watched The Boys. I still haven't watched Invincible. The Boys looks really good. I would watch that. I've heard, I've heard The Boys is good. But when am I going to watch it? I started watching The Righteous Gemstones on HBO. That stars Walton Goggins. It's very good. Oh. Uh, that's all the news. We're done. Yeah. Uh, we, we should, though, however, talk talk about... Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! And this one is uh, by Ben Chinapen. And it is... A picture of the Riddler from Batman. <laughs> and it says, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to another stream. We got to do some riddles and kill a guy. Let's get the hype train going. Thanks, Roxy81, for the sub. Did you see Batman yet? No, I'm seeing it Saturday. All right, because uh, not to spoil anything, but that pretty much happened. <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, that is such a good movie. I heard it was good. I heard you thought I, it was good. I did th- say, yeah, I did think it was good. I heard one person really didn't like it. One little man. <laughs> one very, one very tiny man in more ways than one. <laughs> ben Shapiro but, it, did. It, he had a very critical take on 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 uh on Batman. I, I like how all my like t- all my regular comments about that about the batman have been, have, have like been getting like you know likes here and there but like me dunking on him <laughs> it's like it's, it's gone viral it's like it's exploded shouldn't be too hard to dunk on ben shapiro no like he can't, he can't exactly uh goaltend a basket <laughs> yeah but and i'll 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 say this and then i'll and then we can move on to the next topic so so, as I was talking with someone and they brought up Ben Shapiro's review of it and I said just say our mother <laughs> our mother <laughs> our mother said that she, apparently she heard that Ben Shapiro didn't like it and I said I know more about Batman than he does don't listen to him and my mother says well I'll wait for your review of it so tomorrow I will be posting my review on my YouTube channel, youtube.com. Oh, book, my and God. I have, a, I have a video coming out about the Batman. You should have said have that only, at the beginning of the podcast. I, sh- I sh- was waiting. I was debating whether or not to ta- to bring it up on here. But I guess now is the perfect time because we're talking about the Batman. I, I am I am basically I'm making a brief return. I'd, I've been wanting to come back for a while. been like, I'm making a brief return basically to so that my mother can watch my review instead of Ben Shapiro's. <laughs> I'm doing a, this for my mom. That's a very good reason, I think. Yes. So hopefully, if I can finish it by tonight, I will have it tomorrow. Then the usual time, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Damn. Yeah. I can. I can. I watch it before well, the you, before the show before before I uh, see it on Saturday, or should I wait? No, I don't spoil anything. Okay. I'll I think. Watch it then. Yeah, I don't spoil anything. Good. So. Yay! All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, now we know that's happening. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. But uh, is it just youtubecom slash Wolf? I believe so. Let's see if that link works. Hey, there it is. All right. Uh, go subscribe there. Um. Yeah. Now we need to talk to you guys real quick. Yes. First, let's talk to everybody from last week's Wolfden podcast. Uh, we got also Joshua who says, I would love to just listen to the audio version of your podcast, but you involve too many visuals and your language is not very descriptive. So listening to it would 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 do it an injustice. Sorry. Well, that's a uh, 
I think an important criticism for us to hear. Yes, that that definitely is an us problem, and that's definitely something we should do better with. Yes. So th- actually, so thank you, Joshua, for that. <laughs> we will try to be better. Yeah, we will try to describe things more. Uh, yeah. Parker Rosick says, "Bacon, egg, and cheese on an everything bagel is wrong. What? It is a classic. I didn't. We didn't say it was wrong. I don't think it, it is. It's just too much. It is because like it's a lot of flavors. It's and I don't know if necessarily like the flavoring of an everything bagel goes well with bacon, egg, and cheese. I Plain argue, bagel is one thing. I would argue it's not the bacon, egg, or the cheese's fault." It's the everything bagel's fault, and everything bagel yes. in itself is just too much. It's 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 it it's not the bacon, the egg, the, egg or the cheese. It's the bagel itself that that is the problem. And I say this as somebody who likes everything bagels. So I don't think that I do is what I'm saying. It's just a yeah. mess and and too much. Uh, Daniel Misner, Meisner, Wolf Bros. The everything seasoning is perfect on a fried egg. My girlfriend, you know what? I'm not gonna argue against that that sounds delightful that does sound good yeah my girlfriend makes ramen and then puts an egg on top and that everything seasoning is literally everything uh, honestly that sounds great well i don't know because like now ramen because you got like all these other flavorings in there too is that going to overpower everything in the ramen when i make ramen or even uh fried rice i try not to put more salt because it's usually right. too much salt anyway that's already there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but p- part of my problem with an everything bagel is the mess that it has. And you're putting it on ramen. You put it in on an egg, just an egg. Yeah. I think that sounds great. Ramen. Maybe I could see your reservations about that, but yeah, I think, I think putting it on just an egg is not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Um, Clayton Young says, I guess 30 plus comments is too many to read. The comments should just be turned off on these videos since not one comment is replied to. Not sure they're even read. I don't think they are either. Nope. We just wait for the next week and then we read a select few. I I don't read comments. We should just turn off the comments. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Jordan Rand says, do you guys think the Switch 2 needs a huge change from the current Switch? I know you mentioned Nintendo being pretty gimmicky when it comes to their consoles and making wacky changes, but with the Switch doing so well, do you think it needs something else? Xbox and PlayStation haven't radically changed their hardware over the past three consoles and and have sold well. Got the hoodie, and it's awesome. Thanks, bros. Thank you. You can get your own hoodie over at Wolf. Yes, along with this t-shirt. Yes, the the I just moved my mic to to move yours out of the way. Uh, that you that's the grid tee you can get. That's glow in the dark. Over at wolfdenapparel dot com. Um, so I think that um, uh, Nintendo does not need to change anything. Just make it a little more powerful, and that's yeah. it. However, I- they're not going to do that. <laughs> Yeah, because if you look at it, since the Wii, every Nintendo console has had some sort of gimmick to it, and I feel like Nintendo could very easily add a gimmick to the Switch unnecessarily. But at the same time, like the DS to the 3DS was a pretty linear progression. Like They were essentially the same system, just one had 3D, but like you could turn that off. Right. So I wonder because Nintendo does kind of treat this as a handheld as a handheld to an extent. So maybe they will just make it like a like a performance boost, and that's it. So the you gimmick, know, they won't try to add anything weird. The quote unquote gimmick for the Switch is that it's it goes to docked mode and portable mode, right? And right. the 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 DS to the 3DS, the gimmick was the 3D. Right. So like it's gonna be something weird like that. It's going to be like a switch, but then also it does this. Yeah. And, and th- I'm not confident that the, and then it also does this is going to be worth it. I think it's going to be weird. I think it's going to be a weird, like the 3d, yeah. like, like the 3d. I thought that sucked because, uh, I mean, you could turn it off and the graphics were a little more powerful than they were on the regular DS, but yeah. they could have been much more powerful if it didn't have to fucking render the video twice. 
there were some games that said can only be played in 2D mode. Right. Because, you know, they were so graphically intensive. Right. Uh, I'm not sure if in the beginning Nintendo allowed that to happen, though. No, it was after a while. Yeah. Uh, but so, so <laughs> Holly Blaze in the chat says the gimmick is that it's not very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> also, True. I want to bring up what Willow Davis says. You make fried rice and there's too much salt? Dude, you made the rice. <laughs> <laughs> I usually put like a sauce in it and the sauce usually has a lot of uh, salt in it. Like like either a katsu sauce or I got gochujang and it's very good. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know. The, the, the thing they should do with the Switch too is just make it a more powerful Switch. Like fix some of the design flaws yeah. of the original Switch. Like maybe make the Joy-Cons like beefier. Um... But Nintendo will probably have to throw something in there to make it unique, yeah. even though it's not nece- not necessary. What would be unique would be if you could transfer your purchases <laughs> to, with the new system and it have true backwards compatibility. That would be so unique. Yeah. Anyway, now we're in the chat for a brief moment. I have to pee yeah. and leave. So uh, let's make it quick. I I went to the... I Okay. I had a meeting today. And then I decided to take it here and then it ran a little late. And then I had, I had to go to the studio. I went to the studio. I took apart a part of switch light, realized I needed thermal paste and then ran back here. And now uh, the thermal paste came. I have to get it and then go back to the studio. <laughs> so that's my life today. Or maybe go. I'll just wait till tomorrow. I don't know. Video is going to be late this week, but I already posted one this week, so there I'm allowed to. Be so late. you should be lucky. You should be lucky, guys. You're lucky. There's three Wolf Den and videos this week. Three Wolf Den videos. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half Wolf Den videos are coming out this week. Yeah. Fucking ungrateful bastards. Willow says, I'm ready to crush it in F Zero. Warm up for the MK tracks next week. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, uh, Monster Hunter Rise free with Nintendo Switch Online. What is that a real thing, or is that like something that Nintendo should do for the next Switch? Is that something you want? Yeah. Oh, it's a it's a trial thing. Uh, okay, for one week only. Oh, so it's okay. free for a week. Wow, that's sick. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Apparently, Triangle Strategy has a demo, too. Wow. So, <laughs> you, Layer, you should... You, Layer you Shift should try DMs it. me every single day with other people playing uh, Triangle Strategy. Like, other people tweeting about Triangle Strategy, he sends them to me. He's like, this is why you should play it. Well, like, as if I give a shit. Here's a good way to play it and not spend money on it. Just play the demo? Yeah. Just, and just, just complain like, the whole time. <laughs> yes. And just be like, yep, confirmed. Don't fucking like this. <laughs> what if I love it? <laughs> and you can, then you have an excuse to buy the game. That's not a bad idea. You'll Maybe never, I will just play the never demo. Know, you'll never know unless you play the demo. How long is this demo? Is that a freaking candle that you're drinking out of? <laughs> like a like a freaking like prayer candle? It's, it's my Peter Pan novelty glass. Okay. My wife got me. That looks like a prayer year. candle, but it's Peter it does Pan. Look, now that you said that, it does look like a prayer <laughs> candle. I would have a prayer candle for Peter Pan. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> maybe, I mean, how long is this is this triangle strategy demo? If it's enough content for a stream, know. maybe I'll do that. I mean, it might be. Art, JRPGs have long demos. Uh, Metacension says, what's the biggest disappointment from tomorrow's PlayStation State of Play? <laughs> I'm going to say the fact that there's only one game in it. Yeah, it's one game and it's going to be a game that nobody gives a shit about. They're going to announce one game and they're going to talk about two games we already knew about. That's what, that's what yeah. tomorrow's State of Play is going to be like. Somebody said, I think they said 30 hours. Oh, the demo's 30 hours? That's crazy. Oh, that's, that is crazy. 
Dark Bite says, Unverified Bob, will you be... <laughs> I think he just called me Unverified Bob. <laughs> Unverified Bob! No, oh, continue. Go, what, what are you saying? I was going to say, I got, I got a notification because I, for some reason I get notifications from the Wolf Den account still. Okay. And I said, your application for verification status was denied. <laughs> yeah, so they immediately denied the Bob Wolf account when I applied. Yeah. And the Wolf Den account, they gave it a few hours and then denied it. <laughs> but like part of the verification process is you have to submit articles that are written about you. So... I should have enough by now. They keep fucking writing yeah. articles. They, 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 I, we got, the problem is the articles need to be within the past six months. So we got, uh, the first article that anybody, the first press we ever got, actually the first press we ever got was the fucking, uh, uh people discovering that, that I talked about the switch before it was the switch. Um, right. The first real press was, was the tenant video. When I put tenant on, when we put tenant on the, on the game boy advance, yeah. Then there was um, uh, the the actually when Logan Paul put <laughs> put the Game Boys <laughs> in in uh, in friggin uh, encased in in plastic. Uh, there was a tweet of mine that went on some articles. Then there was yeah. uh, me doing the burn in test, and then the burn in test the second time. And apparently, the yeah. Esquire has me quoted in an article about uh, the fucking uh, uh, analog pocket. There's plenty of articles now. And no. Anyway, Unverified Bob, no. will you be doing uh, Nintendo Switch emulators in your video of the Steam Deck? Probably. Even after the Nintendo Ninjas are taking down videos about it. I will probably touch on it at one point. Uh, what, what are they taking down? down the fact that they're gonna that people were showing it or the fact that people were talking about it so i gotta pretty, figure out how to skirt that line yeah so so i'm pretty sure the one who did the video was uh the fox and uh in the video he talked about how he talked a little bit about how he got the game on there which might have been an issue so so he claims he has a hacked switch uh, and and that's right. the way you you rip a ROM, which is perfectly legal in America. It's not right. exactly legal in Japan. Uh, so maybe if you do that thing where you make it so the video is only monetized in America, you might be able to skirt around that. Um, maybe just don't talk about how you got the game on there at all. That might be worth it. So uh, I don't know. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna touch on it a little bit. I mean, I I. Talked about how I tried Nintendo Switch emulation on the uh, Aya Neo, and nothing happened to me. But it was very brief, and I'll, it yeah. will probably be brief also on the Steam Deck video. It's just that I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to emulate Switch games. I would rather play it on my Switch. Yeah. Also, it, that's that's just stealing. Like I, I don't <laughs> like like it feels w worse doing a game that's currently on the market than it does yeah. emulating a retro game. Anyway. Uh, um, I heard sometimes it's the category for the verification that gets denied. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to try. Uh, you have to wait 30 days after you get, after you put in a verification quest. After you put in a verification request on Twitter, you have to wait 30 days to do the next one. So I'll try a different way yeah. next time. Uh Apparently, one of the ways you can request a verification is through Google Trends, which is probably what mm. I should have done. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on Mac Studio? Uh, Will talked about it at the beginning. Uh, yes. Uh, it looks interesting. I I don't know if it's something that I would uh, necessarily want. Because I'm still back and forth whether or not I should just get a desktop or stick with a laptop. I, 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 it's really cool, but uh, again, for certain situations, I feel like for that price, a laptop makes more sense, but, um, yeah. I, I think it's pretty, it's very beefy and powerful. So for, for that, yes. if you need a Mac specifically, uh, f at that price point and that much power, I think it's pretty cool. $2,000 yeah. for the, for the lowest one. And again, yeah. like it's, it's, you know. 512, 512 gig storage, which right. I think is ridiculous in this day yeah. and age. That that's standard. 
Yeah, I mean, almost everything I do is on separate hard drives. Uh, but then, yeah. like on PC, I'm downloading games. Those those take up a lot. Uh, I do I do fucking video work, and sometimes I just need to. Yeah. I, I I never put anything on my on my uh, system drive. But sometimes when I transfer footage, it's easier to leave it on the desktop for like a second before I put it on another hard drive. And sometimes these, you know, every video is about 200 gigs, yeah. up 200 to 400 gigabytes of footage for every single one of my videos. So, uh, yeah, 500 gigs for a system drive is just not simply not enough. Yeah. Uh, M1 iPad Air 2, yeah, it's pretty cool. I do, I am yeah, interested cool. in an iPad, but that's my cool. iPad still hasn't uh, given me any problems. I drew I'm on it the other day. It was a, great. A Gen Six regular ass iPad. I replaced the screen on it, and it's, yeah, it's fine. I see no need for the average person to get anything other than the basic bitch iPad. Mm -hmm. Even Man, professionals, a, I don't think they need to get the Pro. Well, the it's a. It's about the function with the iPad. It's about the functionality with the Apple Pencil and right. Apple Sidecar. Apple Sidecar is fucking sick. Yeah, yeah. I used that uh, with uh, with my MacBook, and it was awesome. Even on the, I have a Gen One MacBook, uh, uh, Gen One iMac. What the fuck? I have a Gen <laughs> One iPad Pro, the first one that ever right. came out, and I right. side I did Sidecar with my brand new MacBook. And it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you can do that with the iPad Air. If it's M1, the M1 yeah. iPads, oh, yeah. the sidecar is so good. It's wireless. And if you put it next to the laptop, it will uh, know which side it's on. And will transfer stuff between between the I iPad and the MacBook seamlessly. It's friggin' awesome. Right. Mine can't do that. Anyway, Metascension, ref ref referencing the uh, Mac Studio, says it costs twice as much as an equivalent PC, can never be upgraded, but it's pretty. True. It is pretty. I so, have also debated whether or not I, because I found an article that says you can build a stream, a small streaming computer for 500 bucks. And he, lay, he actually laid out everything I would need and like the prices and stuff. And. It, it might be like part of me thinks it'd be worth it for this show because I know PCs are better than Mac for streaming. But then another part of me is like, I don't want to spend an extra money just to get a specialty PC. Yeah, I don't know. Five hundred dollars seems like really cheap. Um, yeah, but not that you're not that you would have to do much. You're just doing it through Discord anyway. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, for sixteen hundred, that NZXT PC I got is a monster. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's really just about having a Mac. Like, I'd much rather have a Mac, and I'd be willing to pay a premium for it. But, again, I'd rather have a laptop than than, uh, yeah. than a Mac Studio. Uh, and if I want a desktop, I mean, you can get a really beefy desktop PC for cheaper yeah. than that. It, it's, it, is a hard, uh, it is a hard sell. Hello, guys. Sorry if I missed it, but did you talk about the Mario 10 eShop deals? So that's March 10th is Mario Day because it spells yeah. Mario. Uh no, uh, I didn't even uh, we know did about it. We did not. They're not. It's usually nothing exciting. Like twenty bucks off. Get Mario Maker. Mario game. games. Mario yeah. Maker's always on sale. If you if you haven't gotten a Mario game yet, this is the time to get it. I guess. Yes. Guys, I gotta pee. Thank you for hanging out. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Um, I wanted to stream yesterday. That didn't happen. Oh, uh, I want to stream tomorrow. That's probably not going to happen either. <laughs> I will try my best to stream on Thursday, but uh, I'm late making this video because uh, a lot of things got in my way. Uh, anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching the videos. Right now, you should go watch somebody that i pick 
very soon now. There's a lot of people online. Wood streaming, go watch him. There He's playing go. Elden Ring. I will see you all hopefully Thursday. Uh, maybe if not, sometime this weekend. Uh, guys, goodbye. Bye.